I made it this time to collect my award myself, so. In 2001, a 10-year-old boy laid his hands on Fruity Loops, a music producing software, and from that moment, a fire was ignited in him. All he wanted to do from that point was to make music. That dream has seen him perform to crowds numbering hundreds of thousands, awarded BET's Best International Act, and a host of awards that make for a long read. Today, 20 years from when he got Fruity Loops, he stands on music's greatest stage, the Grammys. And the Grammy goes to... Oh, come on, twice as tall, burn a boy. He has just been announced as a winner of the best global album category for his album, Twice as Tall. This is the incredible journey of Bonner Boy, a journey that redefined Afrobeat and painted the world with the vibrant color of Nigerian music. The second of three children, he was named Damini, meaning it is mine. I'm from Port Harcourt, but I live in Lagos. Oh, you live in Harcourt? I thought you were born in Lagos. No, I was born in Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt is the south side of Nigeria. It's the capital of River State. So I don't know what to say if I was a good kid or a bad kid. I'm not sure. <laughs> As a kid growing up, he had a life goal, to be one of the most excellent musicians to ever live. If you ask me and perhaps a vast majority of the world's population, we will attest to the fact that this goal has become a reality and even more. For a lot of Nigerian artists, the problem of laying their own foundation and going ahead to build on it makes the description of their musical journey a far cry from a smooth sail. The insinuation here is not that Bonaboy had it all easy for him, but coming from a background of creatives somehow helped to smoothen the rough edges. His grandfather, Benson Idonije, was Fela's first brand manager. His mother, Bose Ogulu, is a former Kalakuta queen, one of Fela's dancers. Having this background made it somewhat easy to get familiar support that most Nigerian creatives lack in their days of little beginnings. Not having lacked parental support and guidance, it is little wonder that his mom is his manager. And she's a very good one at that. This, this Mama Barna right here, yeah. <laughs> oh, she's been there from the beginning. She's been my manager from the beginning, so. Thank you to my mom, the most beautiful woman on earth. Because she always believed, always seen it. Yeah. Bonabo enjoyed a fairly good educational background. He describes his family's financial status growing up as not too rich, not too poor, but comfortable. Having been born and brought up in Potako River State, the trajectory of his education moved from Potako in River State to Agbara in Ogun State, and then to the University of Sussex, London. However, he left London after two years of pursuing a degree in media technology. This decision was based on realizing his sole drive for music. He left and came to Nigeria to fully commit himself to the dream. Upon his return to Nigeria, he did a one-year internship with Rhythm 93.7 FM Port Accord, before officially launching his professional music career when he signed on Aristocrat Record, prompting a permanent relocation to Lagos. In 2010, the then 19-year-old moved to Southern Coast where he met a mutual acquaintance producer, Lerik, who had some studio space. This marked a period when he began to connect to the music of his native country. As a result of his new discoveries, the younger Ogulu created a confluence of genres that would become his signature record. His genre, which he termed Afrofusion, a blend of Afrobeat, reggae, pop, and dancehall makes him stand out. He has this to say about it. Okay, let me break it down. Why I created Afrofusion is because I didn't want to be boxed into any Afrobeat or boxed into hip hop or boxed into anything. Because mm -hmm. I don't believe in genres. Mm. Truly, the world of music and the world as a whole is dancing to his tune. His debut album, L.I.F.E., leaving an impact for eternity, was a huge success as it had trailing behind it two nominations from the Hedis Award, a popular music award show in Nigeria, Album of the Year and the Hip Hop Revelation of the Year. L.I.F.E. was also nominated for the Best Album of the Year at the 2014 Nigeria Entertainment Awards. Opening the floor of his musical career with such success, it is no news that his musical journey has gone on to be laced with the kind of success that any artist would be envious of. 2015 saw the release of his sophomore album, On a Spaceship. That year also saw him leaving his record label and Lyric, his music producer acquaintance, leading to the founding of his own record company, Spaceship Records. All the, all the years have really prepared me for everything that's happening now. His third album literally put him outside, which was the album's title too. 
It was a musical project that widened its international exposure and like the other albums before it, it was followed with great success. 2018 Outside hit number 3 on the Billboard Reggae chart and won Nigerian Entertainment Album for the Year. 2019 ushered in another era for the fast rising artists, seeing him back awards and collaboration that most artists will only dare to dream about. That year saw him release his fourth studio album, African Giant. Yeah, one of the biggest singles from the album won the Song of the Year 2019 as the prestigious Hedis Music Award. He also won the Hedis Award for Artist of the Year 2019. Three times in a row, he won the BET Award for Best International Act beginning in 2019 and continuing till 2021. MTV Europe Music awarded him the Best African Act 2019. He also took home the Future Award Africa Prize for the Young Person of the Year 2019. The African giant indeed stood tall in 2019 as he was among the group of African artists invited to work on Beyonce's album, The Lion King, The Gift. He wrote and recorded a single Jara E and earned the honor of being the only guest artist with their own track record on the album. Bonai Boy became the first Afrobeat artist to sell out the Wembley Arena that same year. More so, he went home with four awards at the 2019 Sound City MVP Awards Festival, winning the coveted African Artist of the Year, Listener's Choice and Best Male MVP Award categories. His track record set him up for even more global recognition as the following year 2020 saw him going home with the Grammy Award win. Africa is in the house, man. Africa, we're in the house. You get me? This is a big win for my generation of Africans all over the world. And this should be a lesson to every African out there. No matter where you are, no matter what you plan to do, you can achieve it. Twice as tall, his fifth album was released in that year. It became his highest charting album to date reaching number 54 on the Billboard 200 and faring even better in Europe and Canada. <laughs> it's all love, man. It's all love. As though he had fire on his heels, the next two years saw him perform a solo concert at Madison Square Garden in April 2022, becoming the first Nigerian artist to headline the show at the famed New York Avenue. That same year, his sixth album, Love, Damini, was released on July 2nd, his 31st birthday. It also charted well around the world, including a number 14 spot on the Billboard 200. His seventh studio album, I Told Them, released in August of 2023, continued his global dominance, charting throughout Europe where it reached number one on the UK chart. Just had to get to number one because it's like I'm not a number two kind of guy. <laughs> and it's nothing short of a blessing, you know? For real. It, it made me happy, you know? <laughs> in the US album End Bona, a record setting for the Grammy nominations. Bona Boy musical career is laced with recognitions, nominations, and awards. Among other achievements, his song Destiny was included in the playlist at the inauguration of Joe Biden as the President of the United States of America. He has collaborated with world-class artists like Rita Ora, Jidena, Sia, Stormzy, Ed Sharan, Damian Mali, Angelique Jikidje, Sam Smith, Steph Landon, Yusuf Ndo, Wizkid, Dave, and he has featured on Lily Allen's Your Choice and Beyonce's Lion King album. Borrowing a line from the characters in the animation series The Lion Guard, who said, Live long enough and you'll see everything. Indeed, in the life of Damini, that's all we can look forward to. We haven't seen it all. We can only be on the lookout for more. The little boy whose life goal was to be one of the most excellent musicians who have ever lived has given us a run for our money. By being that and even more. However, there's still more to look forward to. And like our cartoon character friend said, if you live long enough, we will indeed see everything. Take every day as it comes, you know, and hope for the best and prepare for the worst, you know. And one thing I'm gonna do before I leave here, I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about where you're all really from. Let me take, let me take these glasses off so you understand. <laughs> now, when I say, when I did here, you say, we day. When I did here, when I did here, that means, are you there? You are here. Thank you very much, Sham. Thank you for watching this episode. Kindly share, subscribe, Send to your friends. Till I see you again, bye bye.